second iteration of the board. Well, good morning. It's so warm in here. Isn't that great? <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> uh, it's great to have people that know how to help us, help us through things, right? So, well, here we are in the second week of Advent and back again together to worship, to worship the Lord who came and who has promised to come again. It's interesting how often worship moves back and forth between memory and hope. As we gather today, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts, whether we're here in this room or joining online. Let's open our hearts and minds to what the Lord has for us. The choir has been preparing a cantata that takes us into the Christmas story and we want to be open to fresh ways this familiar story of the Lord's birth can speak to us. We'll also have communion during this service, an opportunity to remember the Lord's death through the bread and cup. And so I invite you now to take a breath and to be here. And let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the life that you put into each of us, the life that you sustain. Thank you for this opportunity to worship today, to remember the Lord. We're so glad that you're joining us in this. We ask your blessing on our time together as we commit it to you through Christ. Amen.
For our call to worship this morning, we're going to recite together the Apostles' Creed as a way of joining our voices with many around the world and all through time who affirm their faith in this one we follow. So I'll ask you to stand as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Last week, we lit the candle that speaks of hope. And this morning, we light a candle for love. As we do this, let's hear again the words of John the Apostle. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God is love. All who live in love lives in God and God in them. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Would you turn and just give a wave to someone behind you or around you? (laughs) 
we worship in community as part of a group. And sometimes there are those who are part of our congregation who are not able to be with us for various kinds of reasons. We remember them as we pray, as well as others, as we go to the Lord now. So please join me as we pray together. For the world in which we live, Lord, we pray. For those tasked with leading governments, small, medium, and large, Lord, that these might seek you out. We pray for your church. We thank you, God, for the church that is around this world, the church that has been in existence for thousands of years, the church that you began, the church that you sustain. We pray that all who are part of your body might live in your love, might be ministers of your grace. We pray for this church. We thank you for the opportunities that you give us, for the people that you gather together, for the resources with which you entrust us. God, that we would encourage each other, that we would be good stewards of all you put at our disposal. We pray for the people we know, friends, family members, people at work, people that cross our paths for different kinds of reasons, people with needs. We pray, Lord, on their behalf and ask that you would, be, that you would bring strength, that you bring healing, wisdom, discernment, clarity. We pray for Polly. We pray for Steve. We pray for Janet. We pray for Bill. We pray for Earl. For Sabra. We pray for Jim and for Sharon. We pray for Beth Ann, for Larry, for Craig, for Tom, for Pat. We pray for Gail and for Jean, for Shirley, for Bonnie. We pray for ourselves. Lord, we know that you want to be working in us, that your desire is to transform us into the people you'd have us be. And we ask that we'd be willing partners with you in that, that we might serve with glad hearts, and that we might seek what it is you want and pursue it with real diligence and grace, that we would be grounded in your love trusting you. You've shown yourself to be faithful. We're glad that we can count on you. We praise your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen? Amen. 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 The offerings that we bring express the gratitude in our hearts for God's care and keeping. They're ways for us to demonstrate that we can use money and it doesn't have a hold on us as well. And in giving, we have opportunity to continue the work that God encourages and calls for. And so if you have an offering with you this day, you can leave it in one of the plates by the door. You can also mail it into the office or use the online portal for that. And we continue to trust the Lord to provide, continue to give thanks to God for God's generous provision. Because we know, Lord, that you are the giver of all good things. And so we bring our thanks and praise even as we offer these gifts for use in your kingdom. Amen.
so grateful to the choir for drawing us into and further into the Advent and Christmas season with the cantata that they now have prepared for us. Ringing, 
The angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Joy to the world. In those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this registration was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be registered with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child.
The days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night.
then suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. 
Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thank you. 
But like the wise men, we have come to worship him. This king who was born in a stable, this king who died on the cross, this king who was raised to reign as Savior and Lord. We respond as we remember the Lord now at this table. And I invite you to join me using the book that's in the pew racks. You'll find on page 15 our service for communion this morning. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and for the gift of life. We thank you for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets, and we thank you especially that in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, born of Mary, into this life that we know, heralded by angels and greeted by humble shepherds. Jesus took upon himself our suffering and accepted the pain of death at the hands of those whom he loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church through which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life with the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper and said this cup is the covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, remember me. Gracious God, by your Holy Spirit, consecrate these gifts of bread and wine and bless us as we receive them at this table. That we might offer you faith and praise, that we may be united with Christ and with one another that we may continue to be faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and we give thanks that you have called us to serve you. We come before you now in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we eat this bread, we remember the body of Christ was broken for us.
And as we drink from this cup, we remember that the blood of Christ was shed for us. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Praise be to God for his wonderful gifts. As our service draws to a close this morning, Missy Schmidt, one of our elders, has some announcements to share. Good morning. Um, the Advent Festival begins um, directly after this morning's service. Um, we'll be decorating the building, which we kind of already did, but we will be decorating the Christmas tree in the sanctuary here and the Christmas tree in Fellowship Hall, so please join us. And there also will be crafts um, and different things for all ages. Dinner will be s served around noon, um, so you can stay or come back for that. Just please bring some place settings um, to help us stay green, <coughs> Excuse me, and all are welcome. Next Sunday, there's a meet and greet for 20 to 30-somethings at noon. <coughs> Sorry, I sang a lot today. Um, lunch and child care will be provided. Please um, let your friends and family know about this and bring anyone. All are welcome once again. Um, thanks for the donations that have come in from warm clothes for kids, the gifts for Aviana children, and to keep um, of the spirit of giving, there's a note from the deacon in today's bulletin about a Christmas gift for St. Thomas. Other activities and opportunities are mentioned in the bulletins too, so please take a copy with you today. Have a great day. And I know we kind of ran out of bulletins too. I'm not sure Missy knew that, but um, a lot of this is on the web page. So if you go to the website, you'll find information about what's going on here too. So. Now, please stand. May the God whose praises we sing, the God whose deeds we remember, the God who sent Jesus to live among us, to lead us to life, may this God bless you and keep you and shine through you as you move deeper into this day and into each day that God gives. Amen? Amen. Amen.